Our next speaker is Roger Skalbeck, who represents the American Association of Law Libraries, the AAAL. Uh, AAAL has been very helpful in the law.gov effort. They've been um, working on the national inventory of legal materials, which is law librarians all over the country have been surveying their jurisdiction. And they've been asking questions like, are the materials available? Um, are they copyrighted? Uh, is there a paywall uh, for dissemination? Uh, are there authenticated versions of this information? Are there disclaimers that say this information is unofficial and you shouldn't rely upon it? Um, Roger is the incoming chair of the AAAL um, Copyright Committee. Uh, he's the associate law librarian at Georgetown Law Library, and he writes very frequently on uh, technical topics about the law and also on intellectual property. And so, Roger, thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Carl. Thank you. Um, good morning. Um, I'm Roger Skalbeck, uh, associate law librarian at Georgetown and incoming chair of the American Association of Law Libraries. <clears throat> Mary Alice Bache, who is a, uh, AAAL's director of government relations, sends her regrets for not being able to join us today. So she asked me to come here and, and deliver the remarks and respond to any questions. She did ask me, though, to express our gratitude to Representatives Lofgren and Lundgren for their strong support of the Law Library of Congress. And in light of today's topic, of course, its unique and valuable digital initiatives. AAAL is an educational organization with over 5,000 members who serve the information needs of the legal community and the public at more than 1,900 academic, firm, state, court, and county law libraries nationwide. AAAL's mission is to promote and enhance the value of law libraries, to foster law librarianship, and to provide leadership and advocacy in the field of legal information and information policy. Our association has been committed to improving access to legal information since it's, it was established in 1906 by a handful of visionary law librarians. We have a strong government relations policy based on the core belief that accessible government information is both an essential principle of a democratic society and a valuable public good created at taxpayer expense. Citizens must be able to access the laws and regulations that govern them. The development of the internet and the constant improvements to digital technologies have caused a sea change during the past two decades in how the public can now access the law. As law librarians, we have been leaders in advocating that governments move online, but that they do so in a way that guarantees that today's electronic legal information is as trustworthy as print and that it will be available to us in 5, 10, 50, or 100 years. In 2007, AAAL's executive board adopted new principles and core values related to public information on government websites that articulate policies on the creation, access, and distribution of government information in the digital age. I'd like to mention them briefly because they guide our association's legislative and technology policy efforts. We believe that the federal, state, and local governments have a duty to disseminate government information to their citizens through government websites. In terms of accessibility, the information must be easily searchable, available to the public without charge, and equally accessible to everyone, including those with disabilities. Regarding the need for reliability and trustworthiness, appropriate safeguards should be established to protect the integrity and authenticity of materials published in electronic formats. This is critical when government entities eliminate an official print legal title in favor of an electronic version available only through the web. It is equally important that the official status of the electronic version be clearly designated and that government entities establish and maintain a clear chain of custody for all electronic information published on the web. Federal, state, and local authorities must also ensure that government information is permanently available to the public and that it is preserved. And last and far from least, AAAL strongly believes that government information, including the text of all primary legal materials, must be in the public domain and available to the public without restriction. Our core policies are well aligned with Carl Malaman's goals for broader access to the law to all of the public. We're grateful to him for his role in raising national awareness for convening events like today and the ones that we've seen for the law.gov movement throughout the country, breaking down walls and bringing together new allies to help us broaden public access to the rule of law here in the United States. AAAL is especially pleased to be working in partnership with Carl and also with the Law Library of Congress. Um, hundreds of our members in every state and the District of Columbia have joined uh, forces to form state working groups to help, help achieve Carl's goal of a national inventory of all legal information. That's federal, state, county, and municipal. This is a daunting task. 
initiated by Paul Lomio and Erica Wayne at the Stanford University's uh, Robert Crown Law Library, with the assistance of members of the Northern California Association of Law Libraries. The California State Inventory is almost completed, and preliminary findings are indeed a little troubling. Of the nearly 540 municipalities and counties in California, most have online codes and ordinances. However, approximately 40% of these legal materials are not official, and they have a strong web disclaimer about the use of their online versions. And in addition to that, approximately 50% of, the, of them have copyright assertions. Furthermore, a small sampling of these online materials found that none provide bulk access to these materials. At the state level, the administrative regulations are online, but there is a copyright assertion. And the cost for a subscription to the official print version is approximately $3,500 a year. As to the courts, the full archive of California Supreme Court cases is available on a vendor website. And to gain access, you must click Agree to a license preventing, from use, preventing you from using the data for legal research and even for public or nonprofit use. These preliminary findings of the California inventory should be a wake-up call to us all about the clear lack of government policies and technology solutions to ensure equitable, effective, no-fee public access to online legal information that is official, digitally authenticated, and that we can be assured will be permanently available to the public and preserved. Because these core principles are so critically important to our members, AALL has become a national leader in advocating for the need to digitally authenticate, make permanently available, and preserve electronic legal materials. In 2007, we published the groundbreaking state-by-state -state report on authentication of online legal resources, which revealed that a significant number of state online legal resources are considered to be official but that states had not yet implemented ready authentication by standard methods. We've just completed our 2010 state updates, and while we found few changes in the use of digital technologies to authenticate electronic information, even when there is no official print version, we are alarmed at how many state, county, and municipal governments, in reaction to their serious budget shortfalls, are eliminating a print official legal title in favor of online only. In addition to populating their state inventory, our working groups are also closely monitoring the situation in their states and speaking out against it to ensure that if an official print title is no longer published, proper digital authentication and preservation measures are implemented. We're pleased that as a direct result of our work, the National Conference of Commissioners on Uniform State Laws last summer named a drafting committee to help develop the Authentication and Preservation of State Electronic Legal Materials Act. One of our members, Professor Barbara A. Bintliff of the University of Colorado Law Library, is the reporter, and AALL has been actively engaged in the commenting process. The draft uniform law will have its first reading this summer, and we anticipate that it is going to the states in 2011. As you can see, AALL is deeply committed to making the law more broadly accessible, and our members have stepped up to the plate to work on these issues in their states. Thank you very much for the opportunity to join you and um, describe some of our initiatives. Thanks. Thank you.